Okay, welcome everybody to this week's weather briefing. Our speaker is John Bangoff from the National Weather Service in State College. Um, again, like I have mentioned the past couple of weeks, you can use the Q&A or like people have been using already the chat function if you have any questions or comments for him during his briefing. Um, and anyways, I'll just let him take it away. So I'll stop sharing. I believe I enabled you to share your screen. Yes, I think that's true. And you guys should be able to see my screen now. Okay. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, as Alex uh, mentioned, my name is John Banghoff. Thank you so much for the invitation to uh, do this yet again this year. Um, it feels like I'm kind of catching my stride a little bit on a few of these now. Um, and it's, uh, man, it seems like it's been a long time since I was a student uh, walking around in Walker Building uh, doing all that stuff. So I'm uh, going to talk about a variety of things today. Obviously, going to talk about the weather conditions. I'm uh, going to share a couple of neat web pages that uh, have kind of come onto the scene in the past six months or so that I think will be useful for your reference, both locally and then across the state. And we're going to wrap up with a preview of some of the new weather products uh, related to winter weather uh, that are going to be rolled out for this winter by the Weather Prediction Center and as well our local office. So hope that today will be uh, insightful and, and meaningful. I will uh, try my best to limit the references to The Ohio State University, but no promises there. Uh, as you probably heard us chattering about, I'm also a big Atlanta Braves fan, so the Game 7 loss last night was a little tough. Some bags under my eyes because I was uh, up late last night. Not crying, no worries, no crying, but certainly was up late last night. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here, um, see if my computer will cooperate for me. A um, couple of nice uh, webcams I wanted to start off with this morning. If uh, anybody's been able to be out and about, uh, you can see some sort of standing wave action, uh, both longer amplitude like the one we see here, and then just some, some smaller amplitude ahead of a, a cold front that's going to try to sag its way south around Neck of the Woods. And you can see here at the, on the golf course uh, weather stem cam some of that uh, finer detail. Uh, a lot of undulations and some um, you know, static stability type situations going on on the clouds. So if you do get a chance, it's a little chilly out there, uh, but certainly go outside and check that out uh, today, um, at least before the rain uh, begins to start. As we look at our satellite and radar imagery, you can see as, as the sun uh, rose this morning, uh, plenty of clouds across central Pennsylvania and really most of the, the state. You can see down towards Philly, a little bit of clearing, uh, but there, a lot of the uh, higher cirrus uh, clouds uh, racing ahead over top of us with pretty strong uh, upper level flow. Um, and uh, plenty of rainfall beginning to overspread as well. At this point, it looks like a majority of the rainfall is going to uh, fall ma mainly uh, north and uh, west of the I-99 to US-15 corridor, kind of not too far, too much farther east than what we have right here. I uh, do expect a little bit of precipitation for us today. But this cold front here uh, is going to do a pretty interesting meandering pattern over the course of the week, uh, which will certainly have a uh, an important impact on our weather locally, but also will set up a pretty tight gradient in rainfall across the Commonwealth. Uh, so again, we'll, we'll dive into that and talk about that a little bit more. Uh, really love this WPC um, uh, map that they generate uh, generally every six hours or so, a 24 hour temperature change map. Uh, and on a day like today, it's uh, pretty uh, illuminating uh, or, or illustrative of, of the current weather patterns. You can see where the cold front has moved through. Uh, we're what, much warmer this morning than we were this time yesterday morning, mainly because it was clear yesterday morning, pretty chilly. Uh, maybe heading out to church or doing anything on your Sunday morning. And this morning, plenty of cloud cover helped limit uh, the uh, radiational cooling uh, last night. So again, there's the cold front uh, here draping through. And fortunately for us, uh, the cold front's not really going to make it through. Well, fortunately for people that don't like cold weather like myself, we're going to stay fairly mild. Thought a good place to start this morning, which is going through the WPC, WPC surface maps to give us kind of a big picture idea of what we're talking about for this week. So let's set it up here. We got high pressure off to the south and east. It's uh, going to pretty well hold its own. Um, it's uh, going to be uh, you know, more or less allowing this uh, particular uh, front to, to stall out across the Northwest Mountains. And as we click this thing through by 2 p.m. this afternoon, it's already kind of, you know, uh, sticking uh, there in Northwest Pennsylvania. Some showers are expected to make their way down into our neck of the woods, but not a whole lot farther to the south and east. Um, and as we push this thing through, this front's going to pretty much remain stationary with broad southwesterly flow uh, aloft. And then uh, at the surface, you know, plenty of uh, a flow as well that's going to allow our temperatures to continue to moderate over the course of the next several days, even pushing up into the mid 70s, perhaps by the time we get into Wednesday and Thursday, which would be a, a nice uh, Indian summer 
I don't know if that's the technical definition. Somebody can probably correct me if I'm wrong on that, but um, something along those lines, certainly a, a warmer pattern. And by uh, tomorrow morning, very similar situation. It looks like maybe WPC has a high pressure here over the Great Lakes, strengthening, pushing this thing a little bit farther south, but still doesn't appear that this thing's gonna uh, do much to get all the way through the Commonwealth before it starts lifting back north by the time we get into Tuesday night into the day on Wednesday. Uh, but again, the big story is going to be across the southeast. Hardly any rain to speak of here. We're, we'll get a little bit, uh, but farther northwest will certainly cash in on um, some of that uh, precipitation. And you can see here by Wednesday morning, uh, man, heading back north. And it's going to take probably until Friday of this week, it looks like, for high pressure to move in. Now, one thing that is noteworthy, it's this time of year when we get some uh, much cooler uh, Canadian uh, continental air moving in and uh, the blues showing up in the high plains up towards Montana, plenty of snowfall there. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk here in just a little bit, but it seems like a couple of the models are hinting at some snow like day 10-ish, which is dangerous, I get it, uh, but certainly a sign that some colder weather uh, could be rolling in. Now, I, I put up a screen capture here of this, but I really want to um, emphasize that this site has become my personal favorite for monitoring the weather. Um, I think it does a really, really good job of displaying the hourly forecast information color coded in a way that's fairly intuitive and it's a point location. So it's not like you're looking at a map and having to cycle through a whole bunch of things. Um, I'll, I'll pull this up here in a second, but big picture, here's what we're looking at. Uh, windshield more or less is gonna be equivalent to temperature, but warming trend this week all the way through Thursday. And then a cold front's gonna come through Friday into Saturday, allowing our temperatures to drop off quite a bit and will be much cooler by next weekend with highs potentially not even getting uh, much above 50 by the time we get into the day on Sunday. Uh, Saturday for uh, some some football looks to be a pretty decent day. Not a whole lot of rain to speak of. As far as our sky cover is concerned, fairly cloudy. Looks like midweek. There's a little bit of a discontinuity here, um, which uh, we are addressing. I uh, messaged the office and I said, "Hey, let's make sure we uh, you know get this uh, cleaned up a little bit." But um, going to be partly cloudy through the week and precipitation again. A little bit of chances today and tomorrow, but largely going to be precipitation three free all the way through the weekend. So not going to do a whole lot for our drought conditions. Let me go over though to the um, the website here um, and I'll show you it's www.weather.gov forward slash forecast points um, and there's a whole lot of different um, things that you can do to kind of personalize this. What I've done here um, is gone through and uh, you know added a couple of things. So so let me back out just for a second. So if you go to weather.gov slash forecast points it's going to uh, show up with this map or th this page right here. So you can personalize it for your location search the map here. Um, and if you have any questions in particular about how to kind of get rid of the map and things like that, you can. But I like it because again, you've got a grid for every day of the week with some generic you know, stuff there. You've got hourly forecast information, kind of like an hourly forecast. And this is fairly easy to bookmark on your phone. And then if you scroll down to the bottom again, my personal favorite here, it's, it's kind of formatting a little funky uh, for me right now. Obviously this is not the state college forecast, but again, I just think it does a really, really good job and is the best tool that what the weather service has out there to be able to communicate uh, forward. Let me see uh, see a couple of things coming in the chat. Yep. Uh, uh, thank you, Christopher, for um, doing that. And then uh, Marissa, thanks for the Indian summer, uh, <laughs> the Indian summer uh, definition there. I don't know if we had a substantial period of cool weather, but certainly a little bit, a little bit of cooling happening there. So that's IDS's forecast points. Again, my personal favorite. I use that very often, um, and I think it does a pretty nice job. So the next thing I want to transition to is talking about exactly how much rain we're going to be getting here over the next several days. Um, and here's the official Weather Service forecast. Uh, this is collaborated across all the offices in Pennsylvania. Uh, this is available at www.weather.gov slash grid images underscore PA. You can also just do grid images to so just get the CTP page, another really good site for you. I apologize for not putting it on the slide, but in general, what we're talking about, and, and this was kind of the theme, you know, over an inch in far northwestern Pennsylvania near the front, uh, maybe a quarter to, well, just over a quarter here locally, and then down in the southeast, almost nothing at all uh, to speak of as, as far as the rain is concerned. And what I want to now go to is um, look at another uh, favorite thing of mine to look at here. Let's see if I can uh, get the, the stuff out of the way up top here. Um, so there's the WPC probabilistic precipitation viewer. Um, and again, I think this is a pretty useful tool here to be able to just see what a lot of the different models are looking at. And over on the right hand side here, you can see some of the, uh, the, the um, holistic guidance or whatever for individual days. 
And so what I'm going to focus on is days one to three, because this is going to kind of give us the highlights. So here's the, the Canadian model. Here's the WPC Super Ensemble. And then here's, the, you know, the WPC forecast officially. And they're all kind of going with a very similar um, setup here. And so I really like this page because it gives you an idea of model spread. It's a nice visualization. Uh, we can also go back to zero Z last night and show uh, what the NDFD and the NBM, the National Blended Models, which is kind of the flagship new uh, tool that we're using largely baseline. Hey, John. Populate days three to seven. Yep. I need to switch your screen share over. Ah, got it. Well, that's not very helpful, is it? I wonder if I can share. All right, I'll share my screen. Sorry about that. Can you there guys you see? You can see it now. Yep, my fault. I was in uh, sharing the PowerPoint mode and now I want to um, share my entire screen. So uh, here we are. But anyway, so this is a WPC probabilistic precipitation viewer. And what this gives is an ability to kind of go hour by hour from a variety of different uh, products. And my internet's being a little bit slow. But I really like this capability just to kind of look at model spread, as I was mentioning. So what I have plotted here, so this is the zero Z run from last night. And in particular, I'm going to look at down here, uh, the fourth line is days one to three. And what you can see here is, you know, we can glance at, so this is the, um, the Canadian model. You can see um, the, uh, the WPC uh, ensemble, super ensemble mean. You got the WPC official forecast. You got NDFD, so all the weather service forecast offices. And then the MBM, which is, again, our flagship model. And so I think this does a pretty nice job of being able to communicate um, uncertainty and spread. And, and there's fairly high confidence, I would say at least locally. You can see there's some disagreement farther to our south and west across maybe parts of the Ohio Valley and Indiana and Ohio as far as uh, exactly what's going to happen. But at least here locally, um, that's kind of the, the main story. And then I, as I was talking over but not uh, able to show you, uh, the 12Z guidance is very similar here uh, here in Pennsylvania with, with higher totals to our southwest and off to our north and east. Apologies for uh, that error on my part. Uh, we'll get back into it. So again, that was my reminder, WPC precipitation viewer. And then the seven day WPC forecast over the course of yeah the next seven days, um, you can see here that uh, we'll get a little bit more rain as we head into the weekend as that uh, cold front does move through. But as far as what we're talking about here locally, um, generally quarter to half an inch if we're lucky. We'll see what happens. But the punchline here is uh, the ongoing drought. Uh, this is not going to do the trick. Our uh, service hydrologist indicated to me that we probably need four to six inches of rain to really break this drought, uh, severe drought for much of Center County and areas farther north. Um, and I just want to show a couple graphics that I posted on Twitter last week that I think encapsulate this pretty well. So first is the percent of, uh, percentage of normal rainfall over the last 180 days. And you can see quite a dichotomy. We're still experiencing sort of the, the lasting impacts at Isaias. That was really what started uh, the chaos here, where uh, for a couple week period down parts of you know Philadelphia and southeastern Pennsylvania, we're looking at uh, 300 to 400 percent of normal precipitation, while we were stuck in sort of the 10 to 25 percent. And so we still are dealing with that uh, deficit and surplus uh, dichotomy across the Commonwealth. And again, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of relief in sight. Um, with the latest drought monitor that came out last Thursday, a little bit of degradation off to the north from where we are, but certainly no improvement um, and kind of steady state, uh, no, no changes happening. And again, based on the rain that we've gotten, which has been fairly minimal, I would sort of anticipate that this would be uh, the same exact situation happening moving forward. But one nice thing I think um, has been the fall foliage has been pretty incredible. I think it's uh, notable that Center County is uh, the farthest uh, south kind of outlier for now starting to fade. Uh, hopefully you guys got a chance to go out and do some leaf peeping, I guess, as the cool kids are calling it these days. Uh, I know the color was incredible. I went out to Call Your Lake uh, last weekend, I guess, um, and really enjoyed um, being out there. Um, and, you know, color now starting to kind of take its full swing down across the south and east. But would expect with some rain um, and sort of persistent dreary conditions that a lot of the leaves would be gone, especially up here in northwestern Pennsylvania. Um, and, you know, we'll just kind of see what happens. So uh, despite drought, it seems like that might be the silver lining for us is a, a, a fairly reasonable period of uh, some nice color. Um, as far as uh, sort of the sensible weather and the hazardous weather, that's not what I'm going to kind of transition into. Um, as far as SPC's outlooks, general thunder creeping into southwest uh, Pennsylvania, mainly along that cold front. There's a, enough upper level flow, um, not a ton of uh, caper shear, but enough to be able to uh, bring in maybe a stray rumble of thunder or two. Same thing tomorrow, mainly in the northwest. But then day three, you can see uh, just to our north as that cold front does sag a little bit farther south, could get a, just enough 
uh, instability, along with fairly limited shear to, to generate a, a strike of uh, or a stroke of lightning or two, but really nothing too much to worry about there. Now I'm going to transition to the tropics, and I know I'm kind of rapid firing through this stuff, but would love to, um, you know, take questions and get through a variety of things. But um, it has been an uh, intense tropical season. That's not news to anyone. Uh, one of the things that was notable to me is um, the the weather surface at State College. We were going to be onboarding as an inland tropical office this year, uh, but because of COVID, that's pushed back a year. Regardless, we've started doing tropical weather briefings, and there's a shared PowerPoint template that all the National Weather Service uses, and uh, there's sort of a numbering system where you uh, populate a macro and you say what storm number is it and then it kind of automatically populates from there. Well about a week ago or two weeks ago they sent out an update to expand the number of storms that was built into that uh, tropical template from 25 to 35 storms and so that was I mean we know that there's been that many storms but uh, for them to have had to expand the uh, briefing is just another way to say how active this has been. You may have seen, uh, I believe it was last night or sometime this morning, they uh, went ahead and uh, uh, upgraded uh, this top tropical depression 27. They're also monitoring this area down here across uh, the Caribbean uh, near the Yucatan, Yucatan Peninsula for development as well. But let's talk a little bit about what we're, we're looking at in particular here. So here is the uh, NHC official guidance um, and expected to eventually develop into a hurricane, not major at this point, but approach Bermuda. I tell you what, that little island has uh, been through the ringer this year. It's amazing how the storms just seem to find Bermuda. Um, but as far as the guidance from the, the new GEPS, which has a little bit more um, model spread, which is uh, a, a good sign for encompassing the range of solutions, it keeps it as a fish storm. Um, notably, though, some of the, the intensity guidance does push this above a Cat 1 up to a Cat 2. Um, generally, consensus, I, I would say, is sort of low end. Uh, hurricane development, but we'll have to watch that and monitor in the coming days. I want to bop over now to um, uh, tropical tidbits here. Um, apologies, I'm trying to get to what I want to see here. So what I've got um, plotted here, so this is the GEPS again, and these are the ensemble member pressure center. So this is going to give us a decent idea of what we can expect um, maybe over the next uh, several days. So um, this is zero Z tonight, and you can see this is the area of uh, tropical depression 27, which uh, is expected to become uh, epsilon at some point. Um, and then as we move forward in time, they're also monitoring this neck of the woods. This does appear that over the course of the next couple of days, so this is now 12 Z Thursday, there's some indication of uh, intensification um, or, or, you know, some, some sort of model center um, that we could see here. So, so we'll have to see exactly what happens, but that could become Zeta. Um, it looks like some indication of an impact of Florida. Again, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Um, but certainly the actives uh, will continue to, to, sorry, the tropics will continue to remain active over the next, uh, you know, couple weeks. And um, hurricane season does not end until November, so, um, or the end of November. So still not out of the woods yet. Another thing to note, uh, Hurricane Sandy did happen in late October. Uh, not expecting that at this point. Fortunately, this is going to remain a fish storm based on how the models are looking. Uh, but remarkably, at this point, Florida has largely been spared. Certainly don't want to jinx that, but uh, despite an active season, the Gulf has continued to be battered. Lake Charles, man, they've gotten um, the, some of the worst conditions of all, but uh, certainly we'll monitor the tropics here in the next couple of weeks. Um, one other thing to show, and I don't know if I have this open, but if you go to weather.gov slash CTP slash tropical, um, that is a pretty useful uh, tool. Uh, where it's kind of a one-stop shop uh, for all of the tropical guidance for whatever reason. All right, there it goes. Um, so if you go to this page, this is going to give you access to the latest and greatest. You can click on our local briefing if we have one out, all sorts of links. And so add that to your tropical uh, links as well. So a lesser known web page that uh, we monitor and keep up to date fairly regularly. So that's the tropics. Now let's uh, kind of look a little bit more in the extended uh, forecast period. Uh, so this is now 12 Z Thursday. Again, that front still hanging out just to our north. Uh, we'll lift north once again uh, by the time we get into that on Friday. But here's the cold front now. Deep, uh, high pressure going to allow this thing to, to surge through by Saturday. And so temperatures dropping off pretty drastically uh, with high pressure settling in. And even some of those blues getting a little bit closer to our neck of the woods uh, does look like we're going to stay on the warm side at this point. But perhaps some of the models are indicating a resurging um, cold snap 
coming in by the middle of next week, somewhere around the 28th, 29th, and some of the longer range operational models uh, bringing some blues into our neck of the woods again. Way too early to tell anything, uh, but certainly something to just keep an eye out for. Um, let me bop over once again. Thanks for bearing with me as I switch back and forth. Um, I, I do not know the answer to this, if this is um, available to uh, non-weather service folks. I don't know if this is password protected or whatever, but this is the National Blended Models 1D Viewer. And I think it, similar to the forecast points page, does a pretty good job of kind of telling the story. So big picture as we zoom out, we've now looked at the next seven days. Uh, I, I love looking at this for say social media or communicating with partners. And here's the trend, warming trend pretty much through Wednesday or Thursday, then the cold front comes through. Obviously uncertainty um, gets a little bit uh, more uh, increased as we head into the early part of next week. But the trend here is that we're going to be dealing with a warming trend through the middle of the week. Uh, cold front moves through and then, you know, we'll dry out. As we uh, head down a little bit farther, as far as precipitation is concerned, uh, this is not particularly helpful or insightful. So this is the, this is Harrisburg, I should say. This is MDT. Um, and so no precipitation all the way through Saturday and maybe a little bit of precipitation next week, but not a whole lot to be too concerned about. The NBM, for what it's worth, does not have any snow there. Let's go ahead and see if we can look at, um, say, UNV, um, and we'll see what, uh, you know, things should look largely different, but I didn't actually get a chance to look at the MBM to see what the snow uh, situation was going to be. Uh, you can see a little bit more precipitation, uh, generally, you know, a, a third of an inch and then another maybe fourth of an inch as we head into the other part of next week. No snow yet for the MBM. So for what that's worth, that's there. But again, I think this does a pretty nice job. If you look at cloud cover, it looks like, uh, you know, Wednesday night to Thursday, probably some sunshine moving in, which would help ramp up those temperatures and get us uh, pushing into the mid, mid to upper 70s, uh, but then fairly cloudy for, um, for, for this stretch of time. Um, I did see a chat come in, so just want to glance at that. Okay, Salik said it's open to everybody. I can um, send you guys uh, a link to that as well. Um, I can uh, type that in the chat here in just a second. Um, but let's get back to business. John, I certainly uh, agree that I don't have the power to jinx Florida. Uh, I don't get into that superstitious stuff too often. Uh, as we're now heading into the longer range, I uh, wanted to show the CPC outlook, so the 24th to the 28th. Interestingly enough, WPC or CPC is keeping us on the warmer side of this cold. So we indicated that some much colder air was going to be coming in. It appears that, uh, according to CPC thinking, we'll stay on the warm side, so perhaps no snow for us. But certainly, man, it's going to be cold up in the high plains and up into the northwest and above normal precipitation favored. Um, and then even beyond that, heading into the early part of November, we're kind of stuck in this pattern, which I'm a fan of warmer than average uh, temperatures uh, for us with, uh, you know, a prevailing trough across much of this, the western two thirds of the United States. Um, and then precipitation still potentially above normal favor, but not, not as strong of a signal, certainly in the precipitation department. All right, so uh, we've got a little bit more time. I'm just gonna wrap up with some winter weather updates. I wanna briefly glaze over the NOAA winter outlook. I know John said a couple weeks ago that he talked about this. Not a whole lot of change from maybe what was expected with prevailing La Nina, uh, but above normal temperatures are favored and kind of equal chances, uh, a little closer to the above normal precipitation chances here um, in Pennsylvania. We'll have to see what happens, but La Nina, you know, fairly predictable here. Um, and I think decent confidence that this uh, will be what we see here. Whether that means we don't get snow, who knows? Uh, I mean, last winter was above normal precip and above normal temperatures, and we ended up with a whole lot of nothing. I certainly would not be opposed to, you know, some sort of a big storm, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But more importantly, I want to spend just a little bit of time kind of uh, blazing through a couple different things that are kind of new on the scene or upgraded for this year. So first is the winter storm severity index. Uh, you guys may have seen this before. There's basically six different categories that uh, individual graphics are created for. I know Chris Long, um, Penn State's beloved Chris Long, worked on this over the summer uh, with his Lapenta internship, and he's been working with us uh, volunteering at uh, CTP this fall, which has been great. But if uh, you access this page, it's a really, really um, nice interface. Um, yep, so you can basically go up here to select a Zoom area and go to State College. Uh, it's all GIS interface. And so you can go through and click it, click on the different elements. Obviously, there's nothing happening right now. But one of the things that's really nice that they've upgraded this year is it's a lot easier to create a static image for this. So even from a social media standpoint, you can click down here and you can generate um, a static image. You can select a zoom area. So for example, we could go down and select CTP. 
And then you're going to be able to get this information all the way through in a static image as opposed to the GIS interface. So that's really cool. They've continued to tweak this a little bit and improve it a little bit more. We honestly haven't used it much at the weather service, but planning to do so a little bit more. The other thing that's available to us internally this year, which we're pretty excited about, um, this is again, not available uh, widely, but um, it's this probabilistic w WSSI product for day four. And so what we're looking at, uh, you can you know, kind of search, uh, select minor, moderate, major, or extreme for the various levels, and then drag through in time. And what you'll notice here is uh, you know, now we're getting into Wednesday timeframe, um, we can see uh, more or less that there, there's an ability to kind of get an indication as to what the likelihood of various probabilities is. So this goes out through day four, right? So starting at um, hour zero and then extending all the way out to um, hour 84, this will help us from a weather service standpoint to perhaps be able to message the longer range a little bit better because we've seen many people get in the conversation about winter weather on social media. So we need to get into that conversation, but doing so is not a straightforward thing, right? We don't want to go out with snowfall totals at that point. We don't want to go out with um, deterministic information. So navigating that is something where we're really trying to, um, to, to dive into. And in particular, this WSSI stuff is going to end up being really helpful for us. And we're excited about that. And again, I talked about uh, experimental day four probabilistic guidance. Um, and again, that's an internal national weather service page, but we may be incorporating that some in some of our social media uh, graphics. Now, the other thing that we're really excited about, another shout out to Jacob Morse for his great work with Hollings this summer, kind of looking at how to message the longer term. As I mentioned, it's difficult for us to do. We have a variety of tools that can do that. But something where we're kind of prototyping is something that might look like this, where you have probability plowable snowfall or something similar to that with a low, medium, and high. And we're, we're working with WPC along with the folks that um, are, are managing the NBM, the Environmental Modeling Center, and higher ups the National Weather Service to ingest some of this data. And so basically what we're running with is WPC creates a quarter inch liquid equivalent probability of exceedance graphic. Um, four times a day. And so the idea is that if we ingest that based on the probabilities, we can kind of partition out a low, medium, and high probability and generate something that looks like this that allows us to communicate, hey, here's the probability of, you know, plowable snow, or here's the probability of uh, impacts from winter weather in the day three through seven time frame, where we don't quite have QPF or an actual snowfall forecast out. We're excited about that, doing some different testing. And again, kudos to, to Jacob Morse for the work that he did. Um, out in, um, uh, in the Dakotas, I can't remember which office, I think Bismarck maybe, um, and did a wonderful job there. Um, and then the other aspect of this that the WPC um, is put out is the Winter Storm Outlook. Um, and you can access this if you wpc.ncep.noaa.gov slash WWD. If you just go to that slash WWD, it'll take you to a, a page to click through a whole bunch of stuff. There's a lot there, but in particular the WSO. This is going to help us as forecasters be able to use as just a data point for how likely is it that we're going to exceed winter storm warning criteria. So again, this is a well calibrated and robust winter weather ensemble. And the additional thing that we're gonna have this year that's not shown here is exceedance of uh, basically 80% of category. So again, some great tools that are gonna help us communicate winter weather impacts a lot better would anticipate with storm track that will be sort of stuck in the muck, likely transition events, rarely all snow. Um, and that's super helpful. Now, locally at the weather service office, um, this is not something that's gonna be publicly available, but something we wanna do is uh, change the range that it, we uh, publish for our snowfall maps. So if you look at the color bar here on the left-hand side, uh, you can see that the ranges are fairly small when you first start, but then they get huge as you head farther out. So for example, there are situations when we're maybe forecasting say 12.1 inches of snow or even 13 inches of snow, right? That's showing up as 12 to 18 inches on this expected snowfall graphic. We understand that that's not particularly helpful. So one of the things that we're gonna be testing offline this fall is the capability of generating basically 25th to 75th percentile ranges so that instead of maybe saying, you know, 12 to 18, maybe this is going to say, you know, 10 to 10 to 15 to, to just better encapsulate what our expectation is and limit some of the kind of hype that we could unintentionally generate based on producing something like this. So again, that's not going to uh, implement this year, but some, certainly something we're working on. I want to continue to improve our uh, winter weather forecasting information um, and move forward from there. Um, so let me just check one last thing to make sure I didn't forget any web pages. Um, I guess another plug, weather.gov slash CTP slash winter 
is going to be your one-stop shop for winter weather forecast information for us. Uh, please consult that. You can see stuff for Pennsylvania as well. So this will be a well-collaborated grid for all the offices if you're interested in that. Um, we also have this legacy day three to seven winter storm threat, which uh, is fine. We're looking to improve that a little bit more, make it a little more useful. Uh, Jacob Morse's uh, research sort of found that some of this stuff wasn't terribly helpful. Um, I, actually, I think that was a, a Sterling volunteer anyway. Uh, not terribly helpful, but there's a whole bunch of information here, including the WSSI stuff. Um, and then um, this is another nice thing where you can look through and kind of click through to see, okay, what, what are we forecasting as far as sensible weather? Um, so some good stuff there. Again, weather.gov slash ctp slash winter. Another page that you may find useful, weather.gov slash ctp slash dss. If you go to this page, uh, this is new and improved hot off the press. You can click on any county in the area. So for example, we click on Center County. We had set these up for COVID support. But this is a really, really nifty page where we've got this forecast matrix that generates multiple times a day with kind of what are the hazards. You can see our weather briefing if we have one, um, watches, warnings, advisories, all the SPC and WPC outlooks are there. You'll note that there's a new excessive rainfall outlook graphic that's county warning area specific. Um, so that's really fun radar. Uh, access to the text forecast, along with some of the, uh, the OBS and, and discussion. So again, some nice updates here. Just want to make sure that you're aware of those things and can incorporate them into making uh, our forecast information more accessible. That's really the goal here. Um, we want to make sure that the end user can, can get that. Uh, one final announcement, our Facebook page uh, is uh, MI, or, uh, uh, what's, what's the phrase I'm looking for? It's down for the count at the moment. We're working to get that back up. Hopefully we'll have that up back up today or tomorrow, uh, but just an FYI there. And as I close, before we take any questions, I uh, would just like to uh, end with how many days until Big Ten football? The answer is five, like our good friend Braxton Miller. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't shout out Ohio State here at the end just for you, John Neese. But with that, I'd be happy to take any questions. Thanks for your time today. Uh, always fun to chat with you guys and uh, appreciate the uh, continued relationship with Penn State. Perfect. Thank you so much, John. Um, and like you just mentioned, and I mentioned at the beginning, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the chat. Um, and we can try and get some of the links sent out as well. Yeah, what I'll do, uh, so I think it might work best, I will just send you an email with all the links, and then you can forward that out. Does that seem like a reasonable way to go about doing this? Yeah, definitely. Okay, sounds good. Yep. A lot of cool stuff. And I think, again, our efforts are, we want to make our forecast information more accessible so it gets used. Um, and now it's, all right, we're, we're also working to make these links more intuitive and accessible from our webpage because it's no secret that the Weather Service webpage is not good. It's suboptimal. <laughs> uh, so continue to keep an eye out for that. A lot of briefing pages and things that we're trying to figure out a way to package them in a way that's accessible for the end user. Um, and so we'll, we'll uh, forward those to, to you as well. Perfect. <laughs> there is a q and a question um, i see this a score yeah. versus for penn state versus indiana does it look like typical big 10 weather for opening weekend in indiana so i didn't actually look at indiana but based on the cold front coming through it's probably going to be relatively chilly and kind of quintessential october uh cloudy kind of cool etc uh i think for for penn state's sake it would be good if they're tested a little bit so that they're ready to go, right? So I think it's gonna be a close game. I'm gonna say 24-21 Penn State uh, with a uh, late fourth quarter field goal uh, to, uh, to seal the deal and get ready for week two, the showdown in, in Happy Valley. Look at that, I chose Penn State to win, incredible. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, if there aren't any more questions or comments, then we can go about the rest of our Monday. So thank you everyone for attending this week. And next week, our uh, weather briefing will actually be via Google Hangouts. We have Marvin Percha, who I worked with this summer at the National Weather Service in Phoenix and is a Penn State alumni, who will be giving our briefing next week. So I hope to see everybody via Google Hangouts next week. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week, guys. Take care.